commercial when I uh, did uh, commercialized the Little Mac for the Punch Out. Uh, it was it was uh, called I think it was called Punch Out or Super Punch. I don't even remember what they called it anymore. No, Super Punch Out was for the Super Nintendo, but the original Punch Out for Nintendo. This, this game became famous because Mike Mike Tyson in 1987 came out with Mike Tyson's Punch Out, and I'm old enough to remember when Mike Tyson's Punch Out came out. It was you know a lot of fanfare. Every kid wanted to have it. Mike Tyson was unbeatable it was like if you knew somebody that beat Mike Tyson it was the coolest thing at the time because he could just knock you out one shot so at the time for my generation Mike Tyson's punch out and this game punch out in general had just become the thing that you know it was a part of our generation it was a, it, we, one of the things we kind of we we related our generation to was you know the beginning of video games and Nintendo Entertainment System and, and one of the more popular games had been Mike Tyson's punch out so it, I remember it came out again in that super punch out when they made Super Nintendo uh, that was kind of popular and then when the Wii came out, they wanted to make Punch Out again. Obviously, Mike Tyson was no longer in, no longer involved in the Punch Out series, but Punch Out, I think, became very famous because of his involvement when it first started. Regardless, and and the name kept, you know, kept uh, kept afloat. So when they made the Wii, you know, they wanted to make a Punch Out game, and they needed to make a commercial. They wanted to commercialize it and really broadcast it out and let people get excited about it. And they came to me to do the commercial. So I played Little Mac, guys. I'm wearing a wig. In this in this commercial, I know a lot of you guys think I have a wig now, but I do not have a wig now. I, I wear I wore a wig in this uh, in this commercial though. But uh, um, in this commercial, because the reason I had a wig on for this commercial was I had to make my hair like Little Mac. But I had it was a few months after I fought Ricky Hatton, and if you guys remember when I fought Ricky Hatton, I had a really short haircut. You know, I had kind of designs in my head. It was really almost shaved. You know, so so my hair wasn't long enough to play Little Mac. So it was kind of long. It was grown since the fight, but it wasn't long enough. So they, they gave me a wig. So I'm wearing a wig in this commercial. And I was really excited because, as I said, it, it's, it's a game that my generation kind of grew up on. Uh, and and I, I thought it was really cool. And just the way that when, I remember when they gave me the script and they, you know, I had to read it over. I thought I was like, I was like oh, this is going to be really cool. This commercial wound up on national TV for about a month. Uh, the short version. This is a dollar fifty. I mean, dollar fifty. What am I saying right now? This is a minute fifty seconds, and it's and it's uh, it's the long format. It's a long trailer. They took a thirty second condensed version of this and had it on TV as as a commercial. And it's funny because I would be just watching TV randomly with my girl or or just with my friends or even by myself, and just like all of a sudden it would just pop up. You know, it would come on TV. So it was pretty funny. And um, and this, but this is the long version. The long version I thought I think tells you the full story a little bit better. It was pretty cool. And so uh, with that, let's watch it. It's the worst feeling that can happen in a fighter. You know your world. So that first speed bag thing right there, they moved the speed bag as high as they could just so I looked extra short because Little Mac, remember, is a short guy, is a short character. So they moved the, you know, you can adjust the height of the speed bag. And the, the, they, they have like a, a a wheel there where you kind of you're gonna roll it up, or roll it down depending on your height. They made it as high as they could and they wanted me to hit the speed bag like I was like I was basically like a really short person, just like Little Mac. So that was the intention of that first clip. And now I'm doing the jump rope. They have me dressed like Little Mac there. If you guys remember, anybody remember? Is the, the little Mac character. He had the green shorts and the, and the black tank. Tank top. In all your dreams, you've accomplished them, and then it's suddenly like this. They just take it away from you. That punch cost me the WVBA title. After 15 years, it's going to be good. If anybody remembers the original King Hippo in the Tyson's Punch, I remember you had to hit him when he was picking up his pants, right? I think you had to hit him in the stomach or something, and then his short his shorts would go down, and then and then when he was picking up his shorts, you used to have to punch him. And I remember as a kid, it was hard to beat him, but then once you got it, once you got the, I guess you, what do you call it, the algorithm? I don't know. Once you get the pattern, you just knew how to do it, how to beat him. And a lot of the characters in the original Tyson's Punch Out, they were like that. You know, you just had to pick up the pattern on how to beat them, and then you just keep reusing it, and you'd beat them. So that was, but but I remember a lot of the kids my age would lose to King Hippo. I, obviously my age meaning first and second grade because that's what age I was when the first, when the game came out back in the day. Back in the ring. I don't think anybody works harder than me so I'm a very hard working fighter. I'm probably one of the hardest working fighters of this generation. I can't afford to sleep. I'll sleep on a See the point of that on the on the uh, on the bike there is to show how competitive little Mac is. So he's competitive in any way. The guy is the guy pedaling faster. He wants to pedal even faster. So anything he does, little Mac is super competitive. It's kind of the building of that character in the commercial. Right now it's time to work. 
again, the speed bag super high, and I and I you know make it as high as you can. It was it was done on purpose. That's not usually how I hit the speed bag. Usually I would bring that I would bring that uh, that thing a little lower, and I would hit the speed bag according to my height. But we did that on purpose because we wanted it to look like I was a very short character. Obviously, I'm not the Jolly Green Giant for any of you that you've have met me, but this was made to exaggerate my shortness. Little Mac, once again, the best. What's up, man? How long have I been with that? That part right there was meant to let it go. I'm, I'm immature. I'm, I'm, I'm always dreaming about being the best and whatnot. And, and you know, somebody walks in on, on me uh, role-playing, and I'm in kind of embarrassed. So I, I kind of have to, like, acknowledge him and hope that he didn't see me. So I kind of give that, that, that uh, half-hard what's up, <laughs> kind of embarrassed that I got caught. Yeah. <sighs> A long time. Be hippo here, baby. Come on. Now that the guy who played Doc is actually in in some some pretty good movies. He's, he's obviously you guys might might know him uh, from the movie Twenty Fifth Hour uh, with Ed Norton. He plays the the detective. He's also in Goodfellas when uh, uh, Ray Liotta at the end of the movie is is getting followed by the helicopter and he's got to bring his brother to the hospital. Uh, and and he, they go to the hospital and and the doctor checks sees he's supposed to check on his brother, but he checks on him and he's like, oh, you don't look good. You know, why don't you sit down? The doctor is played by this actor. Obviously, it was a lot, a lot of, a lot of years before this part, so he was younger. But uh, this guy was uh, in, in several movies. I forgot his name, man. Uh, but, but he, he's, he's been in some, some pretty good movies, man. He's a, he's a f capable actor. So it was, it was fun to work with him. I trust that. That's it. Come on, baby. Come on, come on. Dance like a fly, bite like a mosquito. I, I don't know what that means, Doc. You don't know what it means? Come over here. I'll tell you. What do I think of Little Mac's chances against Piston Hondo? We're going to be saying sayonara to him. That's Japanese for goodbye. Great Tiger ain't nothing but a little kitty cat. He ain't got no arm. How he going to hit you back? King Hippo going to be the king of losers. You see, a comeback is like a yo-yo. You're going to go down, but you coming right back up. And then so you... So Doc is also, you know, he, he's supposed to be a little bit ridiculous himself, right? So that's just like he said, he'll come back as like a yo-yo. You might go down and come back up. And then now he's going to say, but you might end up even walking the dog. That's a yo-yo. Anybody that, that ever plays with a yo-yo, that's a yo-yo trick. When you, when you put the yo-yo, when you shoot the yo-yo down, instead of bringing it right back up, you kind of let it roll on the ground and then you bring it back up. If you're, if you're good with yo-yos, you can actually play that trick. And that's called walking the dog when you're able to do that. So what he says next Oh, yo, oh, come back, it's like a yo-yo, you might go down, you come back up, and now he's going to say you might end up walking a dog. That's kind of, that, that, that joke applies to a yo-yo, but I don't know if everybody would realize it, because I feel like more and more today, yo-yos are less and less popular in this digital social media uh, video game generation, but that's what that next line is meant to intend. End up walking the dog. Okay, go work it, work it. It's been 15 years since I stepped into the ring, but now tip off season, and I just got my hunting license. They're coming back. Twelve classic characters plus new ones in the all-new Punch Out for Wii. Yeah, there was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun working that commercial, man. It, it's probably one of my. It's a small memory, but it's a, it, it's one that I, a lot of people still talk to me about. It's one. It's it's one that uh. It's a small memory, but it's a it's a memory that a lot of people still talk to me about. Sometimes they come up to me and and, and remind me about that commercial. So it's a uh, it's a. Uh, I'm glad I did it. You know, it was a. Uh, it was. It came along at the right time. I remember it came along around the time that had I won the Hatton fight, I probably would have been in training for a, a big fight, and I wouldn't have been able to uh, do the commercial. You know, so I guess uh, you know this everything happens for a reason. <laughs> so at least I was able to do this commercial. And so that's uh, that's the long story, long long and short of this story, and uh, the backstory behind uh, my my Little Mac commercial.